It's the rule of nerds. And it's morphing time because this is our review of the Power Rangers movie. Here we go. So before we go into the movie itself, let's talk a little bit about our history with the Power Rangers franchise. For me, uh, I grew up watching those uh, the dubbed version of the Super Sentai, those Japanese Super Sentai movies. So you got Bioman, Masked Man, Five Man, Jet Man, all those stuff. But I was still young enough that when the American version came out, the Power Rangers, I was still enjoying and watching and playing, playing along while watching it. So I'm a big fan of this whole franchise. What about you, Chico? What is your experience with the Power Rangers franchise? I was a big fan of the very first iteration, at least that was shown here um, in the country. And it was basically the, the it was all Japanese. And uh, I don't remember which version it was, but all I remember was that their eyepieces were different shapes. Like a pink five was a heart and somebody had a boomerang shape that became a boomerang and all the eyepieces became weapons and then one had some sort of like uh, like an arrow shape that became an arrow that sort of version of it and i really loved it a lot as a kid but by the time the american version came out i wasn't really that into it anymore yeah so basically the american versions uh, they used to license some of the scenes from the original super sentai basically the ones where they were in their ranger suits right and then they just uh, shot around it by with all the the teen drama and all all the connective tissue that makes a full story. So you weren't really you didn't have a chance to watch many of those anymore. Well, I had a chance to watch it, but I wasn't as into it. I mean, having grown up thinking that the Rangers were Japanese, and it, to me it just seemed so obvious that the unmasked scenes were American yeah. and then the fight scenes were Japanese yeah. so it, it felt like a hodgepodge so uh, I really preferred um, the, the full Japanese version specifically because it came out during the time when uh, robot anime was huge yeah. uh, in the country and so I kind of like associated it with that so when the American version came out it, fe it felt a little off to me I definitely like the Japanese versions more even as an adult, I will sometimes go into YouTube and watch old episodes of Bioman. So I agree with you there. Uh, that being said though, what did you think of this new version, this movie that just came out? Uh, I'm very torn. I don't want to say I hated it, but I don't want to say I liked it. Mainly because uh, it's like I had two people inside of me. The 12-year-old the me, uh, you know, actually liked the movie, you know. Um, I like the part where they first morphed into their armor and the, the first time that they rode the Zords, you know, the, the, the usual tent pole scenes. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it for what it was. And, um, but the adult me, you know, my patience was really tested all throughout the movie because a lot of it was like, oh, apparently it's not an update. Uh, unlike, let's say, Transformers, a lot of the Disney movies, it's as if something from your childhood was taken so that the adult you can appreciate it. Like Transformers, for example, the first one specifically. Um, that didn't happen here. Here, it's really, for me, still something that somebody who's preteens would probably enjoy. An adult would probably find it a little too corny. And so, yeah, the, the younger me liked it. The older me was like, eh, okay. I think I kind of feel the same, but I, I don't think either side of me was uh, totally pleased by this movie. Yeah. I think it was trying to be uh, two different movies at the same time. One is, the, of course, the Power Rangers movie, yeah. the, the campy, kitschy, uh, you know, corny version, which, you know, honestly, it's part of the appeal of this franchise, the, the seeing these people in ranger suits in spandex yeah. trying to beat these uh, stupid-looking monsters. That's really part of the appeal of this whole thing. But also, uh, I think they tried to, uh, they didn't fully embrace that. They, they tried to go in a, a more serious direction. Uh, the keyword is tried. Tried. Because they weren't particularly successful. But uh, you're going to see in a lot of reviews, they, there, there's some obvious references to Breakfast Club, to Chronicle. But I think uh, it didn't do the job as well as either of those two movies. Right. Now, moving on to, let's say, the performances. Uh, this was really problematic for me. Uh, like we were saying, you know, the whole Rita Repulsa, she's, you know, she's really all campy and you, she's not really scary. If you watch the, the, the TV show, she is not 
scary. <laughs> She's funny more、yeah. than anything.、Yeah. Now,、um, the treatment here is like, you're right. It wasn't all out. Hey, let's have fun and be really campy. They tried to be serious, but it ended up corny. But I have, I have the sinking suspicion that they didn't mean it to be corny.、Yeah. It just felt corny.、Yeah. And Elizabeth Banks, like subtlety was not the word to describe it. She was really like, you know, hammy, campy, over the top, exaggerated.、Uh, name it, she was it. And、uh, Even for Brian Cranston,、uh, who reprises his role as Zordon. No,、uh, no, he wasn't Zordon in the original. The voice, the voice. No, no, he was a voice of、uh, some of the random monsters. Oh, okay, okay.、Yeah. And、um, you have this feeling that you better have been paid a lot of money for this because this will not be a,、uh, you know, a gold star on your, on your report card.、Um, the, for me,、uh, at least, I guess the bright side is that the five young actors. Uh, pretty much brought it. You know, they were pretty good. I mean, they are playing teenagers and they're probably, you know, young. Maybe they're in the 20s, but, you know, they're in essence teenagers. So they're basically playing themselves. Not so bad. I mean, they, you know, like they gave it the right amount of, yeah, we're playing Power Rangers and, yeah, let's try to be serious actors. Unlike the two veteran actors who, in, in my opinion, you know, flailed a little bit. I think that you touched into an interesting point there when you said the word subtlety. Yeah. Because subtlety was not the strong suit of this、uh, the movie. The entire movie. Yeah. You know, it was trying to be a little too self aware, but wasn't exactly successful with it.、Uh, remember when the. When the The suits were first leaked, the first、yeah. images of the suits, and people were saying, Oh, it, it, they look like Iron Man suits,、yeah. right? So they make a reference to that here. They, they say, you know, Oh, do we get suits like Iron Man or something?、Uh, you know that the, the Zords are eventually going to get、uh, compared to Transformers. Yes. So they included a scene here where they wreck a car who looks exactly like Bumblebee. And I would have been fine with it if they stopped there. But then the character goes out and says, Sorry, Bumblebee. So, I mean, they're, they're not really very subtle with this. I think it's almost like cracking、some. a joke and then telling the audience, Okay, did you get that? Get it? Get I it? just、yeah. cracked the joke. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, subtlety is definitely、yeah. not on their list of priorities.、Yeah. And,、um, okay, so, and speaking of subtlety or, or the lack thereof,、uh, personally, I felt like there was a sixth ranger. In the movie, and that was Krispy Kreme. <laughs> and,、uh, you know, I just、um, usually when you incorporate a real brand into a movie,、uh, if it's done in a very organic way, you don't mind.、No. But with this one, it was really like, you know, you can almost expect somebody to go, oh my God. And there was literally <laughs>、yeah. a scene where they were like, this、yeah. donut is so yummy,、yeah. you know?、And、it was just like, Horrible, I'm sorry, but not so much, not, nothing against the movie or Krispy Kreme, but the way it was、um, executed.、Uh, it was like they kept saying it over and over again lots of product shots, lots of logo shots, and you can almost imagine it takes you out of the movie, and each individual viewer is probably going, Wow, how much did this brand pay to have their you know, product featured in this movie? It was too in your face. Yeah. But, but that being said, you know, I, I think that this review was starting to skew a little negative. But just to make it clear, I didn't hate the movie.、Yeah. I, it was a perfectly fine movie. It's not going to be great. It's not going to be on anyone's uh, uh, best of 2017 lists at the end of it. But it was perfectly fine. And, you know, as, as a fan of the Power Rangers, you know, there were some interesting Easter eggs in、yes. there as well. Okay,、uh, going into those Easter eggs,、uh, you know, there's a mid credit scene that we have to talk about. Okay.、Uh, in the mid credit scene,、uh, okay, we'll, we'll not spoil too much, but it's hinting at the arrival of a character named Tommy Oliver. So if you're a fan of the, the Power Rangers franchise, you don't need to be told who Tommy Oliver is, not to spoil anything, but he's going to be a very important character in the series and probably the big feature in the upcoming sequel. In the first sequel. Uh, another Easter egg we found was、uh, you know, cameo appearances from、uh, Jason David Frank and Amy Jo Johnson, who played two of the more popular Rangers in the history of the franchise.、Mm -hmm. So they're there near the end. They're,、uh, they're, it's a cameo, so they're,、yeah. they're pretty much、uh, passers by.、Yeah. Okay? Uh, there's also the mention of a Zeo crystal. The Zeo crystal is this, this thing that、uh, Rita Repulsa is trying to pull from the ground. Uh, if you're a fan of the Power Rangers franchise, again, there is a season of Power Rangers called Power Rangers Zeo, 
where it's that crystal that gives them power so potentially some uh something to mine for a future sequel and uh you know a particular deep cut that i like was uh you know the character of trini the yellow ranger she yeah. has some little brothers and in the end they're playing around with uh power rangers figures and they were referring to the yellow ranger as a he yes the interesting thing about that the background for that is uh if you saw the original American version, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers season, uh, the Yellow Ranger does not wear a skirt, although the Pink Ranger is also female, has a skirt. And the reason for that is the, the series that they were pulling their footage from, the Yellow Ranger there was a male. Yes. So there's actually background behind this little joke throwaway. It was very subtle, something that we said they didn't do very well, but I, th I really like that line because you can draw that connection to it. And speaking of, uh, we might as well throw it into the bag. There's a, there was a lot of talk about how uh, the Yellow Ranger was actually, you know, lesbian. Yeah. It was never directly confirmed, but there's a scene there that hints heavily on it. They never say it, they never discuss it directly, but they practically said it without actually saying the L word. Yeah. And they, would they talk about identity and identity, her place in the world? And even if they don't outright say it, it's pretty much the story and of it's a pretty groundbreaking. Yeah. Um, but you know, depending on who you're talking to, there there's that sector who, who are saying, like, wow, this is pretty major. And then there's a sector that says, you know what? By not actually addressing it head on, you you wasted a golden opportunity. Yeah. So you watch it and you know you make your own um, decision as to whether you think um, they handled it well or not. Okay, now the big news going to this movie was that uh, the Power Rangers actually, they planned this out to be a six movie arc. Ouch. So we're gonna, we might be able to see five more sequels for this franchise. Yeah. From what you saw from this first movie, are you excited to see five more Power Rangers movies? You know, I'm, I might be excited to see the first sequel but I don't know about the subsequent uh, uh, the subsequent sequels because uh, you know law of diminishing returns. You know we mentioned Transformers before. Super excited about the first Transformers. Loved it actually. Uh, was underwhelmed with the second and you know didn't wasn't really happy with the third. And by the time the last one came out, yeah. I didn't even watch it anymore. Yeah. So what, I haven't even seen the trailer for this next one. What yeah. more for this one? Uh, which you know because for me really everything about it was just. Too, it was too immature. It was too juvenile. I mean, nothing was believable. Uh, you see uh, Pink Ranger getting school scissors, cutting her hair, and she comes out looking like she was styled by a professional. Uh, you have the, the Power Rangers going to the Zords with a token, oh, we, we're so clumsy, we don't know how to operate these machines. And then 30, five, seconds later. five <laughs> seconds later, they're like, Kung Fu, yeah. you know? <laughs> Look at us, we're yeah. awesome. And uh, it's not really something that you can sink yourself into because you can't get into something you don't believe yeah. and you can't really like imagine them as real people yeah. or the situations as real situations yeah. so those are definitely fair points that is it now yep. for our review of the power rangers movies but we want to know what you think after you've seen the movie let us know in the comment section did you like the movie do you want to see the sequels and what is it that you want to see that they haven't done yet in the sequels of the Power Rangers movie. That's right. So um, we'd like to ask everyone, why don't you please subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel? It's The Rule of Nerds. And you can also check out all of our online um, accounts. Uh, that's The Rule of Nerds, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As for our individual accounts, you can follow me online. It's at Chico Garcia, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can follow me at JM underscore Bolante on Instagram and M underscore Bolante on Twitter. Nerds, Nerds out! out. Here we go.